termites and cockroaches. Has there ever been so lovely a pair? Now, I'm not going to tell you to let them live in your home, but there is more to this order than we give them credit for. For this is the order Blatidea. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. So today we're talking about the order Blatidea, which contains everybody's favorites, the cockroaches and the termites. So you may think this is an unlikely pairing, and you would be right. This is actually a pretty recent development. So they used to be considered their own separate orders, with the cockroaches being the Blatidea and the termites being the Isoptera. However, more and more people have been endorsing their combination into one order. And in 2018, the Entomological Society of America officially combined them under Blatidea. Let's break down some similarities and differences so we can better understand their shared history. This is going to be a bit of a ride, so please bear with me here. One of the big differences that people think of right off the bat is that termites are all eusocial. This means there are multiple generations that reside together, there's cooperative care of young, and there are different classes of adults in which only some reproduce, such as workers versus queens. Although they don't fit the bill of eusociality, cockroaches are still pretty social for insect standards, with them liking to group around one another, and some species even practicing biparental care, which is very odd for an insect. Both groups often feed on wood and other plant detritus as well, although cockroaches have a broader, more omnivorous diet. Essentially what happened is a subgroup of social cockroaches dove really heavy into that niche and put all their stat points into sociality, and then they also honed their diet on wood and some other plant detritus. And this is how we ended up with termites. Obviously this didn't happen overnight. It took millions of years for termites to get to where they are now. I bet you didn't expect the cockroach order to be the complicated one, huh? Although they belong to the same order, I'm going to describe how to identify roaches and cockroaches separately, for both our sakes. Let's start with roaches. Roaches are often oval-shaped and flat, allowing them to squeeze under tight surfaces, such as cracks in your house. Even the antennae lay flat. They also have a large pronotum, which is that shield-like plate that goes over their thorax behind their head, and they're often some form of red, brown, or black. However, a lot of tropical species can come in a wide range of colors, so don't be deceived. The wings are oval and overlap one another, and like mantids and grasshoppers, they have those thick leathery forewings we call tegmina. Cockroaches also have what we call cursorial legs, which are legs adapted for running, which is why they are so speedy. Now, termites on the other hand can be a bit tricky because different classes of adults can look a little differently. The alates, or winged termites, are the reproductives. They're often mistaked for ants, but unlike ants, their wings are large oval shaped and they're almost equally sized between fore and hind wings, extending sometimes even longer than the termite itself. The old order for termites was Isoptera, with isos meaning same and terra meaning wing referencing the same size of their fore and hind wings. Like cockroaches, they also have pretty large pronotums. Worker and soldier termites are simpler in form, lacking much of their pigmentation, wings, and even eyes. In terms of life cycle, roaches and termites are both hemimetabolous, which is an incomplete three-stage metamorphosis from egg to nymph to adult with the nymphs looking similar to the adults, but lacking wings. The termite life cycle complicates this a little bit. Essentially, winged reproductive termites will hatch out, grow, and then leave the colony, forming swarms with other alate termites, and then pairing up male and female to go start new colonies. The new lovebirds will shed their wings and begin reproducing and filling their colony with workers and soldiers. Eventually, that king and queen will create alates of their own to go off and form new colonies. And the cycle continues. Also, termite queens are egg-laying machines, and some queens can lay tens of thousands of eggs in a single day. I mean, it makes sense when you see the size of some of their colonies. Cockroaches follow a more traditional life cycle, although they do lay their eggs in egg masses called uthika, 
which are clusterings of eggs covered in a hardened protective case. Uh, mantids also do this. I wish I had a more interesting story for you on how the name Blatidia came to be, uh, but Blata is literally the ancient Greek word for roach, and eidos is form, so Blatidia is just form of a roach. Although I have heard some say that in Latin, Blata means more broadly a light-shunning insect, which that's pretty cool. As you might have already known coming into this video, cockroaches and termites can sometimes come in conflict with humans. Cockroaches don't bite, but since they can thrive in some pretty filthy areas, they can spread bacteria and other microbes in areas that they infiltrate. The best thing to prevent cockroaches from taking hold in your home is to keep the area clean and seal up any cracks that they can get in through. Even some dirty dishes in the sink can be food for these roaches. Try not to flip out too much if you see one. Depending on where you live, one or two getting into your home is bound to happen. However, if you're starting to see really large numbers of them, you may have an infestation and that's where you need to bring in a professional. Termites also can be a bit of a problem. We like to build things out of wood, and termites like to eat wood. You can see the problem here, right? Annually, termites can cause up to $5 billion in damages in North America. Now, threat of termites varies regionally, but costs incurred from a termite infestation can be well into the thousands. Many companies offer termite warranties and will periodically check your property for any sort of damage. It's best to do research into your own region and decide accordingly. It isn't all bad though, I promise. Termites and roaches are some incredible custodians of the great outdoors. Leaf litter and wood are really difficult to digest, so having these little guys able to take those nutrients and recycle them back into the environment is critical. The plants appreciate it, and so do all the vertebrates and other arthropods that feed on them. That's why it's so important to preserve the dead wood and leaf litter on your property. Not only does it provide habitat for a whole host of critters, but with a little help from your friendly neighborhood detritivores, those nutrients get cycled back into the land it came from. Though we may not like them in our homes, these insects do serve important functions out in their natural habitats. Look, I understand if you kill the roach that's scuttling around your kitchen, I'm not gonna judge you, but when you see them out in their natural environment, take some time to appreciate all they do. Even roaches have beauty when you see them as part of the larger environmental machine in which we all rely. Thank you so much for listening, y'all. I know this was a complicated one. And if you enjoyed the content, please remember to like and subscribe so you can keep up to date with future orders. Also, if you have any favorite species from this group or any other fun facts I didn't mention, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. Peace, y'all.